Greetings, people of the galaxy. I am Zach, and welcome to ADHD. With the reappearance of Bo Katan in The Mandalorian, I thought now would be a great time to not only explore her history in Star Wars, but to also highlight how much she has grown and developed as a character over the years. So, without further delay, let's get into the history of Bo Katan. Bo Katan Kryze was born around 25 years before the Clone Wars. We don't have an exact canonical date, but that does seem to be about right. She was born on Mandalore itself, and was the younger sister of future Duchess of Mandalore, Satine Kreese. The two sisters were close, but as they grew older they began to possess philosophical differences regarding the direction the Mandalorians as a people should take. Satine believed that the traditional combative Mandalorian lifestyle was largely to blame for Mandalore's war-torn past. Thus, Satine wished to usher in an age of pacifism for Mandalore, so that they would not repeat their tragic history of endless violence. Bo-Katan, on the other hand, firmly believed that Mandalore should embrace its warrior heritage so that it could become a galactic power to be feared and respected once more. This ideological rift between the sisters eventually destroyed their relationship. Bo-Katan sought like-minded individuals and formed the Night Owls, an all-female group of elite Mandalorian warriors. Together, she and her Night Owls joined with the terrorist organization Death Watch. Death Watch sought to return Mandalorian society to the ways of old, which was much in line with what Bo-Katan wanted to do herself. It was led by the former governor of Concordia, Pre Vizsla, a cunning and deadly warrior. Bo-Katan effectively became Vizsla's second in command. Death Watch was very quickly exiled from the system after making an attempt on Duchess Satine's life, and they set up camp in the Outer Rim on Karlak. After being betrayed by the Separatists, Death Watch was now enemies of both the Separatists and of individuals affiliated with the Republic such as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ahsoka Tano. Once a proud organization, Death Watch was in a rough spot, essentially squatting on a backwater planet in the Outer Rim. And Bo-Katan? What about her? Well, seeing that Bo-Katan was still firmly a part of Death Watch even after the assassination attempt on her sister, it would seem that she had very few qualms about having her sister assassinated. Her desire to restore Mandalore to the days of old seems to have taken priority over anything else in her life at this point, even over her own family. A year later, Death Watch moved operations to Zanbar and encountered Maul and his brother Savage Opress floating in a lifeless escape pod out in space. After nursing the two Zabraks back to health, Pre Vizsla agreed to a partnership with them, with the goal of forming a crime syndicate army and using it to overthrow Duchess Satine and to take back Mandalore. Bo-Katan was reluctant to join the former Sith, as Death Watch had already been betrayed by Count Dooku. Vizsla, however, was unconcerned and Death Watch proceeded with the Alliance. Bo-Katan was also trepidatious about Death Watch aligning themselves with organized criminals, because she believed that they were not trustworthy. But eventually she did fall in line and assist in the retaking of Mandalore. Once Satine was overthrown, Maul maneuvered himself onto the throne by challenging Pre Vizsla to single combat. Vizsla was a formidable warrior, but not much of a match for Maul, who beheaded him and claimed the Darksaber and Mandalore as his own. Bo-Katan immediately rejected his rule as he was an outsider, causing Death Watch to fracture. The Night Owls and some of the Mandalorians chose to side with Bo-Katan, while the remaining Mandalorians accepted Maul's rule. Bo-Katan and her loyalist forces soon broke Satine out of prison and bought enough time to allow Satine to send a message to Obi-Wan Kenobi. However, Maul's forces were too much for the loyalists to handle, and Satine was recaptured. This act by Bo-Katan proved to be something of a mistake, as it played right into Maul's hands. Kenobi arrived on Mandalore soon after and attempted to rescue his former lover Satine, only to be captured himself. Maul then murdered Satine, forcing Kenobi to helplessly watch. Bo-Katan and her loyalists quickly rescued Kenobi in hopes of gaining the Republic's help in defeating Maul. It is clear that her sister's death impacted Bo-Katan likely much more than she thought it would. It seems to have snapped her out of her crusade to restore Mandalore to the ways of old, and instead set her on the course to simply doing what was best for her people by prying Mandalore out of Maul's hands. After joining forces with Ahsoka Tano and a legion of Republic clone troopers, Bo-Katan finally retook Mandalore, but for a tragically short amount of time. Just days after retaking Mandalore, the Republic became the Empire, 
and Mandalore was occupied by Empire forces. Bo-Katan and her loyalists refused to bend to the will of the outsiders and fought back. Unfortunately, she was eventually ousted from her homeworld by Clan Saxon, who agreed to do the Empire's bidding on Mandalore. Bo-Katan spent nearly two decades away from Mandalore. Not much is known about what she did during this time, but I imagine she and her Night Owls were likely causing as much damage to the Empire and Clan Saxon as possible. After Clan Wren chose to rebel against the Empire, Sabine Wren presented the Darksaber, the symbol of Mandalorian leadership, to Bo-Katan, believing that she was the Mandalorian who could best reunite and restore Mandalore. Bo-Katan was initially skeptical, but after representatives of the other clans backed her, she accepted the Darksaber and began to unite the clans against the Empire. Sadly, the forward momentum for Bo-Katan and her loyalists would not last. The Empire quickly grew tired of trying to control the Mandalorians and determined that the best course of action would be to exterminate them with extreme prejudice. The might of the Empire, led by Gideon, closed on Bo-Katan and the Mandalorians, wiping out many of them and forcing the remaining survivors into hiding. This was known rather eloquently as the Great Purge. It seems she spent the next eight years or so gathering strength so that she could make yet another attempt at reuniting the Mandalorian people. One step forward, two steps back. Bo-Katan's efforts throughout her time in Star Wars have been emblematic of this phrase. Time and time again, she has made progress in her goal to restore Mandalore, only to rapidly lose it all. Everything that she's been through, the terrible things she's done, the people she's lost, and her homeworld being taken from her, it would be enough to break almost anyone, but not Bo-Katan. She is perseverance personified. She's like the Rocky Balboa of the Star Wars universe. She keeps getting knocked down, but never fails to get back up to keep on fighting. I won't lie, I never really thought much of Bo-Katan as a character up until this year. But looking at her story as a whole, and how she's changed as a character over the years, I truly do think she's quietly become a fantastic Star Wars character. Luckily for us, we're going to be seeing a lot more of her in The Mandalorian played by Kitty Sackhoff, who voiced her for all these years. And you know, look, some actors who get to act in Star Wars, they kind of see it as a job. They don't truly love their characters. This isn't the case with Kitty Sackhoff. Playing Bo-Katan means the world to her, and I want to play this clip of an interview she recently did that really exhibits that. So I'm really just trying to, um, um, I don't know, not have a panic attack. <laughs> For the most part, you know, this character has been such a part of my life for so long and um, it is incredibly special and rare to have been able to actually be able to play her in live action and and um, um, so there's a lot of nerves that come along with that. Well, that was the history of Bo-Katan. How do you feel about her? Are you excited that she's back and in live action? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember to like and subscribe new videos every Wednesday, as well as Mandalorian episode breakdowns each Friday. Anyway, I'm Zach, thank you so much for watching folks, and I'll see you in the future.